so I realized when I was editing this video <laughs> that it's really out of context. You know how you just start talking to someone randomly and they're like, what are you talking about? And you forgot the context ahead of what you said. I forgot the context. So what I wanted to do in addition to the last video I made about answering a bunch of questions are the questions that I get about me personally, and I get it. So it comes in the form of criticisms and just hateful people, but also in the form of just curiosity or whatever. And so what I wanted to do is sort of interview for the job. I was just trying to be funny and I was gonna call it that, but it's mostly just getting to know me. And here's why it's important because this channel deals with some pretty heady stuff and we have a lot of party boys coming in through here, whatever. And some of them stick around, most of them don't because this really isn't the greatest party mushroom. Most of the people that are here are here because they come from trauma and PTSD and panic attacks and depression and abuse and they're trying to get off medication and they're searching and they're trying to be better people and they're hurting and they're broken or they're desperate and they're suicidal. So you want to know like, who the fuck is this bitch? What is she doing? <laughs> so criticisms from the science people, like you don't even know what you're talking about and they'll pick something really weird about this mushroom out and like, you don't even know what you're doing. Like, well, not only do I not know, but like science doesn't know. You picked the, like one of a few things that were really stumped about this mushroom and you think you know and you actually, nobody knows. Or they'll say, what do you know about difficulty? You're wealthy and you live in a really rich house and you should get a job. You don't even know what it's like to suffer. And it's like, okay, first of all, this house was a piece of shit when I bought it and I got it for a discount because it needed a lot of work. And then instead of taking on debt, I pay as I go, save up a little bit, work on it. Plus I know how to do my own construction work and I work on it. So it, three years and I choose to video in the areas that have actually been renovated. And then there's the party people that are like, oh, if you've never done psilocybin, you know, you don't even know what you're talking about, what it means to cheer up. Okay, cool. I'll fix that. And you're, you know, who the hell are you to give advice about this or that? You don't even know. I'm like, eh. You know, I might not be a therapist, but I know some shit. So the other thing is it's a fair question because so many of you have been betrayed by so many people. Some of you have never trusted anyone in your life. And you come to a channel like this, you come to a channel like this, like this. You come in skeptical, you come in, what the fuck does, they don't know, what do they, they can't, and all that is, is a t it's, it's distancing so you don't actually trust them or need them because everyone you've ever trusted or needed has betrayed you and left you and hurt you and let you down. It is a valid question, whatever your question is about me, because you may be desperate for someone to listen, for someone to speak in a way that you can't, to find the words you can't find. And it's terrifying to think if you trust me, even a little, I may go off the deep end somewhere, somehow, ah, there it is. See, I knew she was a bitch. I knew she was an airhead. I knew she didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. So you wanna know as much as you can know to maybe help guard yourself against it. So I can't promise you I won't disappoint you, but I can promise you I'm always gonna be honest. And so this video and the context for it was for you to get to know me as much as I'm willing to say publicly. It's not that I don't want to be known. There's just some things I'm, I can't really talk about either yet or at all, but there's some valid fair questions about who the fuck I am and why am I qualified to have a channel like this? Well, first of all, because I have a channel like this. That's all the qualification I need. If you want to know more, watch the video. <laughs>
and lots of people to help, check all the links in the description of this video. And most importantly, buy me a coffee. I need the caffeine, man. Hello, beautiful people. So no one requested this one, but in a roundabout way they did, just with accusations or whatever. But I just wanted to put it on the channel because it seems like it belongs there or whatever. So firstly, I'm not an authority and I don't profess that I'm an authority. And I don't pretend like I'm some guru. Anything that I do that looks like advice or comes across like advice, it's me sharing my opinion or what I've learned. And I want what I've been through in my pain to benefit other people if it's information that, that works for you or helps you or whatever. As far as like the science goes, I do have a, a background for that and, and we'll talk about that. And so when I started this channel, it wasn't because I thought I was accomplished and some authority and I have some quote right or whatever. And I think the only people that would be considered an authority on a mushroom channel would be someone with a mycology degree or with an equal amount of real world experience, you know? If you were going to go the qualification route, you would need to have a degree in mycology, chemistry, possibly be a doctor and naturopath, and a psychologist, possibly psychiatrist. If you were to qualify for the highest level of authority to have this channel, and I'm not any of those things. So I started out with a high school, loving science, loving the human body, or way before that, exhausting my school's libraries on the human body and them having to order more books from other libraries. I worked ahead in all my textbooks and finished them early and got in trouble. M my parents, for whatever reason, didn't appreciate intelligence and did not want me to be tested for anything about intelligence. And so I was never put in the gifted program, although I should have been. I was bored out of my freaking mind and I used that to push myself into other things, other groups, other avenues, multitask, sitting at my desk, whatever. And in high school, I got into just about every group I could get into. I was very busy with cheerleading and gymnastics and working a job and still made honors grades. Graduated with honors, the 13th in my class of like 300 and something. I don't remember how many or whatever. College. Started out in a degree in communications and worked to try to get rid of my Southern accent, but that was a long time ago. When I was in my communications, I wound up taking the science classes again, remembering that I loved them. Went to pre-med slash sports medicine, took a lot of classes in that. Got intimidated by math because the way my brain works is very asynchronous with my autism and I have dysgraphia and dyslexia, so I can do math in my head quickly. I think that way, but the order, the organization, the writing, the seeing, the flipping, the memorizing, I'm slower at, and because the classes moved so quickly, I was continually chastised and punished and felt stupid, and I took that through my entire life about numbers and math. So it wasn't until I was a single mom and working two jobs, trying to put food on the table, make ends meet, that I decided to go back to college and take a lot of the higher level science and math classes that I now after, here's another qualification, eight years of therapy, and I don't mean eight spotty years, I mean every single week, plus two days a week going to support group therapy. So three days a week of intense therapy Lots of reading, journaling, worksheets, exercises, phone calls. It was intense. Eight full years of it. And somewhere in that path, around the year five, I realized that I wasn't stupid, so I went back to school. And in my chemistry classes, I found the confidence to take the physics classes and in physics, each time I got better and better so that by physics three, I made the scale grade in the class, which to me was like the, the ultimate graduation and confirmation for myself. Scale grade just means he used mine as the perfect test 
to grade everyone else from because he borrowed the test from a professor at MIT that was a friend of his. It was a four and a half hour exam. No one was expected to complete it or complete it perfectly. I didn't complete it, but I had the most correct answers of anyone in the class and completed mo more of the tests than anyone, whatever. So he used my grade scale grade. That to me was all I needed. And after that, I was like, now I just wanna do it because I'm interested, but I can't afford to keep going to college. So I have done the schoolwork, but not gotten the actual diplomas for a degree in K through middle school, which in America, like ages five preschool-ish up to middle school, which is around eighth grade-ish. Education, special education for differing learners, secondary education for high school, health and physical fitness. I am qualified to teach that now and now a degree in science in general to teach science or all of the science and a degree in biology. So I have like all the classes for like five degrees or whatever. And because I never paid for any of them, I couldn't actually like get jobs in them. I would have had to go pick one, finish it, pay for the diploma, get the diploma, and then do that for a living. And I did teach, I taught high school honors, wrote a lot of the curriculum. We were broke, the school was broke, didn't have textbooks, wrote the textbooks. That was fun, I loved it. I burned out on it because of my autism and I gave birth to a son that is autistic. So I retired from teaching. I finished up my eight years of therapy and I fell headlong into the autistic community, working with autism, learned about my autism, found out about my daughter's ADD, learned a lot about ADD. That led me down a whole different path to the brain differing brains, neurodiversity, all of the types of brains that we have on the planet, learning. I've always been fascinated with psychology and the brain, clearly after eight years of therapy, realized there is no difference between thoughts, PTSD, mental health, and the actual structural neurology. And I have always wondered why psychology, psychiatry, and neurology are three separate fields when they should be three tripod pieces of one field working together. There's a lot of neuro imaging that, are, that point to different neurologies and different brain functionings and types. And now that we understand how thought works, especially through entheogenic use and how it lights up the brain differently and how neurons work and how thoughts become things, all of this stuff makes me wonder why the field is still bifur and trifurcated the way that it is. That is my background. I'm being vague because of the whole doxing situation and it's very unsafe for female YouTubers right now out there. Personally, I have PTSD, years of abuse from an abusive upbringing, abusive elders in my life and authority figures, but also because I was undiagnosed autistic and undiagnosed gifted with high intelligence. And I did a lot of work in the high intelligence community, dealing with people whose brains function differently. There are a lot of intelligence deniers out there. Some people who I very much respect and I see where they're coming from on it. And that, that can be another whole video. It actually needs to be another whole video. And I, I see where they're coming from and I'm not going to say they're wrong, but I'm not going to say they're right. <laughs> There's a lot more to intelligence than just high and low. So we'll get into that on another day. But I can tell you that people that function on a completely different level of intelligence, whose brains function rapidly, traditionally, through the absorption of information, three-dimensional thinking, logical and web-like reasoning that can see things and flip them around and spit them back out rapidly, that you can say one thing and they get the next 10 things before you even say it and they're already there and then they gotta wait for you to explain it. like. That kind of brain is the kind of brain I was born with. So it's hard to explain to people whose brains don't function like that. Doesn't make me better than anybody. It makes me very different and in many ways has made my life extremely difficult. And no, I don't want you to feel sorry for me, but there is such a thing as ignorance is bliss. And when you're already a freak like having autism and you don't belong on the planet, 
that will make you want to kill yourself. And a lot of autistic people do. It's the highest cause of death before age 25. It's, it's the number one cause of death is suicide. And then having a high intelligence makes you a freak and makes it really hard to function on the planet. Being female and having a high IQ or being intelligent is a real problem because it makes you a target for insecure men when you're just trying to mind your own business and do your own thing. And then being autistic makes you a target because people think you're stupid. They equate autism with incapable and childlike, and then you get treated. People try to put, push you as far as they can. Being female but not being a typical woman, i.e. I play drums and not just bongos, like a full drum kit. I rock climb, I adventure sport, kayak, and have always enjoyed metal and heavy music. But I'm also female and I like all kinds of music. There's very little music I don't like. And I get into the ethereal medicine woman and the nurturing side of things very much. Purple's my favorite color. So it's hard to be a tomboy, which I hate that term. For all of these reasons, I understand my audience and the people that come to this channel. I believe in recreational drug use. I believe that all drugs should be legal, especially and including the entheogens. But I also believe the harmful drugs should also be legal in their natural form. If man is going to create a synthetic, highly dangerous drug, they have the right to regulate it but they don't have the right to regulate something that grows out of the ground for recreational use. I also don't believe in the term drug culture other than this is a drug and there is a culture of people that believe that recreating this way should be fun. And in that sense, the word drug culture is great. And I don't judge people who want to use drugs recreationally because I do and I am one of them and I believe it is a valid form of recreation, and I don't understand the vilification of it. The things that I say on my channel, I come across like some mom, pat little girl who, bless her heart, is afraid of drugs, and she thinks drug use is bad, okay? Like, oh God, if you only knew. And there's so much I can't show you, and so much I can't say. First, for legal reasons. Second, to be a responsible YouTuber. And my main goal for this channel is to free drug use up, to be normalized, for entheogens to be a regular part of life, for recreational drug use to be a valid form of recreation, to share good, solid information about the Amanita class genus, of mushrooms, to dispel false information, to gather the best, safest information for use, to help people coming off benzos to find a good way, healthy way to get off of them with the least amount of suffering possible, hopefully, possibly with the use of this mushroom, to go through the science and present the science to you as I find it and as I get it and as I understand it and as it changes. To bring people together to talk about this mushroom, to be an info dumping ground, to be a place where it's safe for people who are coming here from sketchy, scary, haunted backgrounds to be able to learn in a safe place. We have the forum for that reason, so that people can experiment, talk about, and share. To be a place where I can start to gather indigenous peoples and first peoples accounts of, and recipes, and lore, and stories, and use, and knowledge about this mushroom. To help people with PTSD to find a safe space. My audience is 85% male to help them find a place where they can finally breathe and feel and emote and be afraid and be vulnerable and scared and heal and own their masculinity and not be afraid of it and not shove it down and spread their wings and be wholly male. For anyone who has suffered any level of abuse and fear, who have trauma, 
that hopefully they can find a way to deal with that trauma in a safe space. These are the reasons I started this channel. And as an organizer of information, as a person who knows how to communicate and organize people and bring people together, as a person with a science background that can read the science and a person with high intelligence who can navigate this stuff quickly and figure her way through it rationally, these things I feel make me qualified to be your Amanita Dreamer. And the most important thing that makes me qualified is that I have found that my highest, truest trait thing that I have is love. It sifts to the top in every thought and every motive and every anger and every tear. Everything that I do and everything that I have, love always seems to be the reason for everything that I do, feel, or think, even my rage, even my tears, and even my pain, I usually find it's because someone is being hurt and my attempts to prevent it are being stopped. That one thing alone, the fact that it seems like no matter what, everything I do and all my motivation keeps coming back to love and wanting to stop the suffering. If that is the only qualification I have, I take this channel and I hold my head up and I say hello. I am your Amanita Dreamer, and I love you beautiful people.